recently announced. Okay, that's why it is the hot issue. I said it is relevant for why, why it is relevant for the next exam. And this is framed under section framed by now complete the filler text. Framed by central government under section 5 of FIFA. Okay. This is having 11 chapters. And for us, every chapter is relevant. Do you have this document with you? We have already shared this document. Foreign Trade Policy 2023. And if you have not received, please get in touch with Shruti Ma'am. She will send it to you. It is already uploaded actually in the app. But somehow, if you cannot lay hands, speak to Shruti Ma'am. Okay. So in the total, there are 11 chapters. This is the list of the chapters. Legal Framework and Trade Facilitation. General provisions, no more important things. Chapter number two, chapter number three, four, five, six. These are important chapters. These are important chapters. Right? Chapter number nine, that is something altogether new. It was never there before, so it also becomes important. Chapter number nine, promoting cross-border trade. Chapter number 11 is having definitions. So more than 60 definitions are there. Okay. So more than 60 definitions are there. If the time permits, we will do all the definitions. Right now, I'm starting with chapter number one, legal framework and trade facilitation. Everyone is having the printed copy. Everyone. Kiske ke paas ho, kiske paas nahi hai. Hey, yani. Printed. Even if it is, you don't have it today, no problems. It will help you if you have it. From tomorrow, you can have it. Today, we can continue without this copy also. Okay. Terry, you have it? Terry Marshall. Write on the check. I read it. Some of you say don't have no problems. This is already uploaded in the app. And those who don't have it, where from you will find? Drop a message to Shruti Ma'am. She will share the copy with you. Okay. No, this is not same. This is Foreign Trade Policy 2023. This is altogether new policy. While reading, you will find lots of similarities, but there are many new things also in this policy. Not same. Okay. Hmm. So starting with the chapter number one, there are 32 points in this. So this is a point number 1.05, 1.07, 17, 19, 26, 27. 32 points are there. 32. So it is a chapter. This is the last one. Sorry. Okay. Then there is chapter number two. So in a total, 32 points are there, and we must understand every topic. Some are relevant, some are not relevant, but you must understand everything. Point number one, this is already known to you. Just read by yourself. I'm not reading it. What it says? Any clarification required in point number one? Apsana, Panisha, Terry, any question point number one? Actually, there is nothing to ask. Right? This, we already done. this is important point, point number one. Earlier, all the foreign trade policies framed by the government were given a validity period of five years. Those were given a validity period of five years. In this policy, no validity period is fixed. It will continue to be foreign trade policy 2023, even in the year 2035 also. Like we have act, which is the oldest act you have read? Oldest act. Tell me quickly. Oldest act. Oldest act. Oldest act. Indian contract act. Negotiable Instrument Act, Indian Penal Code, Neaji, Negotiable Instrument, 1881, Contract Act, 1872, right, Penal Code, 1860, right, the same way, this is going to be there until it is completely replaced by the new policy. So this will be having us, right, not underline the date, from which date? Effective from 1st April 23, note down the date, underline the date. New foreign trade policy effective from 1st April 2023. Right. And how long it will be operational? And shall continue to be in the operation unless otherwise specified or amended. Means no fixed validity period. Even after 20 years, 30 years, you may refer foreign trade policy 2023, but that, is, that will be amended on a year to year basis. So instead of bringing the new policy every time, relevant amendments will be incorporated. Then, further, 
All exports imports made up to 31 March 23 shall accordingly be governed by the relevant, relevant foreign trade policy unless otherwise specified. What is the meaning of this line? This policy is effective from 1st April. This line simply says it has no retrospective effect. The meaning of this line is any export import already done up to 31st March, this policy has nothing to do with that. That import or export already completed up to 31st March will be governed by the foreign trade policy 2050-2020. This policy is not having any retrospective effect. So, write two points in the notebook. Number one, the new foreign trade policy is effective from 1st April 2023. And number two, Unless otherwise you specified, point number two, unless otherwise you specified, there is no retrospective effect. There is no retrospective effect. Is this clear? Okay, so point number two is over. Sorry, point number one. Number two, what it says, the central government, in exercise of the powers and under section three and five of the foreign FTDRA, as amended from time to time, reserve the right to make any amendment in the FTP by means of notification in the, in the public interest. Now, in this point, what are two things worth noting? What are the two points worth noting? Number one, the power to amend is vested in the central government only. Number two, amendments by way of notification. And number three, every amendment should be in the public interest only. So, in this, you have three points. Number one, power to amend the policy is vested exclusively with the central government. CBIC will not do anything. CBIC has no role in the foreign trade policy. CBIC is responsible for implementation of the provisions of the Customs Act. Foreign trade policy, CBIC's role is zero. So only the central government is having exclusive right to amend. Amendment shall be by way of notification of the official gazette. And number three, every amendment has to be in the public interest. Noted. So those who are attending the lecture for the first time, for them I'm repeating. Please keep noting. More you write, more you remember. And intentionally I'm speaking everything twice, thrice, four times. More you listen, more you remember. Okay? So do not omit writing. Writing is a must. One time writing is better than 10 times reading. Okay? And as soon as class ends, what is your responsibility? Write on the check so that everybody can reach. As soon as class ends, what is your responsibility? What do you have to do? Here we have answers revision. Revise at least twice. Okay, so everybody can see, or it is only me who is seeing this. When you write, uh, keep it public. Instead of direct message, so direct message means only I can read, not, not everybody else. Right? And in that, if you change that, who can read, it means it will go to public. So everybody can see that. Anyway, so if those who have not seen, let me tell them, immediately after the lecture ends, do not leave the seat. Read everything you have noted in your notebook at least three times. By the time class ends, you must be having two or three pages, hundred pages, not more than that. Read at least three times. Tomorrow morning, again read it. So when you meet me tomorrow evening in the class, you remember everything, whatever we have discussed. Correct technique is very important for more learning. Everybody puts in the best of their efforts. Yes, Riyaj is asking, can I write on the printed notes? Why not? Wherever you are writing, it's okay. Take one side, print out, left side is always free. Whatever you are reading, whatever you can simplify, that, write it on the left side. You see, I always write only one side. I'll just show you my notebook. I don't, use both, I don't write both the things. The left side is always free for more working. That is my way of doing it. You decide yourself. But the technique is more important. So I've shared one technique, technique today. Immediately after the class is completed, read it minimum three times. Tomorrow morning, read it again. If you have any question, write down the question also then and there and send me the message. I will reply. Okay. Immediately you can send me a message. The reply may be coming to you tomorrow morning or maybe tonight itself. That is okay. But reply will come. Okay, so taking you back to the policy again. So point number two is clear. Who's having authority to amend? The exclusive right to amend the policy is vested with the central government and any amendment can be brought in only by issue of notification of the official and Every amendment has to be in the public interest only. Then, here we have handbook of procedure. Policy is framed by central government and the procedure is specified by DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade. Okay, so now write it in, clear, in complete sentence again. The policy is framed by central government and procedures are prescribed by DGFT. So that there is no reason for confusion that you are not writing by mistake. Policy is framed by Central government and procedures are defined or determined or decided by DGFT. In the handbook of procedure, add this further by DGFT in the handbook of procedures. Okay, all the forms related to import export, those are called as A and F 
from numbers are referred to A and F. A and F stand for higher area forms. So later on, I'll show you the number of forms in this policy in the handbook of procedures. Right? Those are all A and F. A and F number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is A and F? A and F is this one. Higher area forms. Okay. So in this, what do you understand? Policy is framed by central government. Procedures are drawn by DGFT, and where the procedures are prescribed in the handbook of procedures, and all the relevant forms are required as ayat neriyat forms. Those are a part of handbook of procedures. I'll read this again, what highlighted portion, and check if you have any question or any doubt. Any question? On this point, it is good to invest time initially. So later on, there is no reason for confusion. So I'm going very slow. Instead of 10 days, if you take me 12 days to complete 400 policy, that is okay. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a race to complete. Understand everything but by but. You'll never get the opportunity to understand 400 policy so much in detail. Okay. Point number four. This says where a specific provision is spelled out in the appointed policy handbook of procedure, the same shall prevail over the general provisions. What does it mean? Point number four, chapter one, point number four. What does it say? The specific provisions always prevail over general provisions. Specific provisions always prevail over general provisions. Write in the chat. Let me see what Kali Kapni. Okay, people have answered. Absana has answered. Okay, very good. So you have written it general, or rather very good. Let me tell you something more. No, it is not that the notification prevails. No, please. Notifications are subordinate to the act. And by chance, there is a mistake in the notification act prevails. So what is written in point number four? That is not related to foreign trade policy. That is a standard law. I will relate to the foreign trade policy. 1.04. General provisions. And. Specific provisions. Apply. Where. There are no specific provisions. So, when you send me a file, what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Continue that. Hmm. Specific provisions. If there is any specific provision given, that will always prevail over general provisions. So, here what I mentioned apply where there are no specific provisions. So if there are any specific provisions, those will always prevail over general provisions. So here we will write specific provisions always prevail over general provisions. Okay. I'm example I'm taking you to chapter number two. Point number 31. This is point number. Now read the title. What is the title? Second hand goes. Very specific title given. Right? It means general provisions will not be applicable for import of second hand goods. So general provisions are meant for new goods. This is giving you multiple meanings. General provisions of the foreign trade policy are meant for new goods. For old goods, for second hand goods, one specific point is there, that is point two point three one. Right? Now read this. What is written? In relation to import, there are lots of provisions which are general. But when it comes to import of second goods, which one will be applicable? 2.31. Right. Let's see something more. Now, this is a specific point for only import of metallic waste and scrap. It is not for the import of metals. It is import of metallic waste and scrap. Again, specific provision. These are just examples. What is the meaning of specific provisions? What is the general provisions? So almost all the provisions of the foreign trade policy are general provisions, but few are specific examples are here. 2.31, 2.32. Right. Similarly, we have chapter number five, which is talking about the uh, EPCG scheme. Only capital goods are there. Not all the goods are covered there. Okay. So whenever we talk about the provisions, we have to understand one fact that specific provision will always prevail over general provisions. Okay. The point number five is talking about the transitional arrangements. As of now, this is relevant. Otherwise, we omit this one transition provision. But today it is relevant. Because as of now, it is applicable. And those who are preparing for interview, please keep this in mind. This is a very important point. This is any license, authorization, certificate, escape, instrument, investment, financial benefits issued before the commencement of the FTP 23 shall continue to be valid for the purpose of duration for which it was issued unless otherwise stipulated. 
though the new foreign trade policy is applicable from 1st April 2023. But any authorization, any license, any permission given, or any self punishment is issued under the old foreign trade policy that continue to be valid even after the new policy has been introduced. And the same terms and conditions continue to be applicable. These new policies will not be applicable to those. All right. So generally, authorizations are valid for a period of 12, 12 months. EPCG scheme is valid for 18 months. So some some EPCG license has been issued in the month of January 23. That is going to be valid till the 30th June 24. So whether that will be governed by the foreign trade policy 23 or the foreign trade policy earlier. It will be governed by the old policy, not the new policy. <laughs> then this is about the classification system. Item by the board of policy is delineated in the ITC Schedule 1 and Schedule number 2 respectively. So can you or do you have access to Schedule 1 and Schedule 2? This is available on the, web, on the government website. For every item, there is a policy. For every item, import policy, export policy. Right? Anyway, just say the importability, exportability of a particular item is governed by the policy on the date of import and export. Underline this one. The importability or exportability is as on the date of import or export. The date of import export is dependent on the 2.17 of the handbook of procedure. So handbook of procedure we'll see later. Bill of lending and shipping bill are the key document for deciding the date of import and export respectively. So date once you line, bill of lending for import and shipping bill for export. Those will determine which policy will be applicable. Right. So for the purpose of validity, for the purpose of applicability to the scheme, which dates are relevant for import bill of lending and for export, it is the date of shipping bill. In case of change of policy for free to restricted, prohibited, restricted, and otherwise regulated, export export already made before the date of the strike will not be affected. So it is already transaction already done. No retrospective effect of the policy that we have already seen. So this is not relevant for you. This, this highlighted area is not relevant. However, the import to the high sale will not be covered under this facility. So this is applicable. Oh, no, sorry. So something which is which is still, still yet to come to India, then that will not be covered by this. Joe Chi's Barmel and Kari, that will be governed by the importability or exportability as on the date of this one. So this point you need to read in detail. And if there any explanation required, I will answer that in detail. But that will be in the next lecture.